Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Jesu for the wedding of Michael and Courtney. This special day marks the beginning of their married life together, and they are overjoyed that we could all be with them today. Our duty and delight as their family and friends is to help them make this a joyous celebration of their love and commitment. We are all invited to participate in this liturgy by joining in the prayers and in the singing. Please use the programs you received as a guide. Let us now take a moment to quiet ourselves in the presence of God.
Well, good afternoon. Welcome to all of you on this joyous celebration as we witness Courtney and Mike becoming husband and wife. And one little advice, if the fire alarm goes off, please remain calm, exit single file to the nearest exit, quietly. Let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Michael and Courtney, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you, together with your family and friends, as today, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this jo joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. And let us join together in singing of God's glory. attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Michael and Courtney, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray 
and begged that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praised be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. to come give the second reading. A 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Again, I welcome all of you to the Church of the Jesu. You've come from many places around the country and around the globe, and it's great to be here together to celebrate with Courtney and Mike. Now, they chose that first reading from the prophet Tobit, and I think it's simply beautiful. We're treated with the images of the bridal couple coming together in prayer, asking God to bless their love and their life together, which is exactly what we are doing here this afternoon. We know that you're eager to spend the rest of your lives together. And Mike and Courtney, I challenge you to take these words of this reading seriously, saying them to God each and every day, call down your mercy upon me and allow us to live together to a happy old age. And then say together, amen, amen. 
In the second reading, Paul offers some practical advice to the Philippians. Paul describes the goodness that will come to you because the Lord is near. And you have found that your values aligned on the importance of faith and family and friends, and your feelings developed into love for one another. Together, you can ask God for whatever you need. You can give thanks for all that you've received. You can give thanks for loving one another. But then you have to remember to love one another, forgive each other, rejoice, and be at peace. Welcome God into your marriage and always allow for a place for God in your lives. And like that couple in Tobit, pray together. You know, at a, at a funeral, somebody has an opportunity to give a eulogy, so you learn a little bit more about the person. We don't do that at weddings, except maybe at the rehearsal dinner or the reception. So how do you picture the couple before us in, I don't know, 50 or 60 more years? What started as a nudge from Courtney's father, Bill, look where it happened, look where they wound up. This morning, I went out to... Uh, the Rehabilitation Center at St. Camillus in Wauwatosa and met with a couple. He's just moved into rehabilitation for some health reasons. They met at Marquette University as freshmen in 1953. That was before I was born. They met 70 years ago. In January, they'll celebrate 67 years of marriage. And I looked at them and the life that they've had together, the ups and downs they've experienced, they've had some great success, they've had a few failures. Now they're facing some health challenges. But still, I looked at them together in the hospital this morning and said, what a perfect couple. I thought about the vows that they took when they got married six, almost 67 years ago. We will hear Courtney and Mike make these same promises in a few minutes. When they say, I do, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. It's a big promise. It's a big promise. But we're all here to support you in that so that you can, in fact, live maybe 67 or 70 more years living those promises. This promise is in reinforced in the words in the Gospel of John. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. And I've told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. Love one another as I love you, and your love will be complete. Now, when couples come together and decide to form a family, the idea is that they should walk through life hand in hand as a team. They put their relationship at the center of things with their family and friends orbiting around them. And you have been blessed and fortunate to be surrounded by family and friends that have supported you throughout your lives and they're here today to be with you. Your journey to heaven takes on new meaning today as you step forward together as one. And each one of us is called to walk with them on this journey. And we all pray and hope for the good times and health, but we promise to be with you in the sickness and maybe a few bad times, but hopefully not too many. Life is important, like people we know who are special. We keep them close. So while we have it, it's best we love it, care for it, fix it when it's broken, heal it when it's sick. This is true for marriage and children with bad report cards and dogs with bad hips and aging parents and grandparents. We keep them because they're worth it. And there are some things that just make us happy no matter what. And that's what these things do. Suppose one morning you don't wake up. Do all your friends really know how you feel about them? We often hear the advice, never go to bed angry. The important thing is to let every one of your friends know your true feelings. And especially your best friend who you're marrying today. 
Always remember what it was about the other that made you know that you were in love. Love like every day is the first time you fell in love. And love like every day is your last day together. That was as high as we could get it. <laughs> <laughs> Dearly beloved, you have come together in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intention. Michael and Courtney, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I go first. I, Michael, take you, Courtney. I, Michael, take you, Courtney. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and honor you. In all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Now, I, Courtney, take you, Michael. I, Courtney, take you, Michael. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring fulfillment, his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Give Michael Courtney's ring. Courtney, receive this ring. Courtney, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Michael, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I invite Bobby and Bonnie forward for our universal prayer, and I ask all of you to stand, please. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that God and his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for the unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all loving couples, that they find peace and love in each other, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Courtney and Michael's family and friends, and for all who made possible influences in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Courtney's Nana, Frances Monahan, her grandparents, Michael and Mary Stahovich, and her uncle, Richard Clark, as well as Michael's grandparents, Stephen and Elizabeth Kilcheski, his grandparents, Raymond and Rita Tevlin, and his uncle, James Kilcheski, may their spirits shine upon us and help guide us as we continue to remember and honor them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here today, loved ones, family members, and friends, that all enjoy good health, happiness, and safe travels this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we hold silently in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are present in our midst as Courtney and Michael seal their union. Accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. It's my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on this occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in Christ our Lord you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joined heirs with him in heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he gave the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of your saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, up 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son are filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of the marriage of Michael and Courtney, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant that they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Lord, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at the time of their death, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now we join our voices and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who you have joined in the sacra sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Courtney, and upon Michael, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn the family with ch their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surround them. May they come to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
side because that's where Laura is. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I remember that enter under my roof and only say the word of my soul. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. By the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what is your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart and love those you have joined together in this holy union, and replenished with one bread and the one chalice. Through Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth in his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. and Mrs. Michael and Courtney Kilcheski.